Hey, 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 friend. Thanks for joining me for another episode of Side Hustle Growth Podcast. Please, of course, let me know how you are doing and also how you're enjoying the podcast. If you've been a long time subscriber or you're new and you've you've just found us through the rebrand, let me know how things are going. Let me know what you think about the, the topics that we've covered so far this year. Find me on Instagram at Kristen and James, or I'm on LinkedIn as well. You just have to find my name, Kristen and James, everywhere. Or you can comment below if you are watching this on YouTube. I love I love reading your comments. One of the most important things about starting and running and growing a side hustle is determining its potential, right? Like, how do you know this is going to work? Can you really commit to the work? After all, Passion is just the spark. We've talked about passion before. Passion will fuel you, but how far are you going to let this passion really take you? So what makes you think your side hustle is sustainable? Let's discuss that further today. Let's talk about the true potential and determining your side hustle's true potential and what that can look like for you. So we, I'm going to jump right into it. I'm like ready to like, (laughs) I'm going to jump right into it. Personal interests and passion would be the first one. Let's start off by looking at personal interests and passion. I already mentioned that it starts with passion. At least typically it starts with passion. I mean, there are some who start a side hustle because of a quick buck or just for a short time, they want to pursue something just just really about generating more income. There might not be passion involved, but most times, most times it starts with passion. So it's important to look at aligning your side hustle with your passion. So it feels less like work. I mean, it doesn't still involve work, but you know, you get what I mean. You get what I mean. And more like an exciting adventure. So you see, the reason why alignment is important here is to keep you motivated and to build your resilience. If you're passionate about seeing it work, you automatically want to put in the work. There will be challenges. There will be doubts. There will be questions. There will be tons of things getting in your way. And quite frankly, some goals will not pan out. Let's just keep it real. You know we keep it real around here. Some goals will not pan out. But if you see your tr- your side hustle's true potential, and can move and can go with the ebb and the flow and the roller coaster, the up and down of growing a business, your own business, then the amount of time, effort, and focus won't won't really matter. And remember, it's more about the journey than the results at the very beginning, because the results may not come within a desired time. And when I say it's about the journey, we tend to measure our worth based on the results when really we should be measuring our worth based on how we're carrying things out and, you know, making sure you're not comparing yourself. But we're going to talk about that a little bit more later on. So we start off with looking at your personal interests and your passion. What are you interested in to making sure it's sustainable and your passion? How far are you going to let this passion fuel you, keep you motivated? Next, let's get into profit potential and growth. So let's chat about ways to assess the profit potential of your side hustle, your side hustle idea. It's not just about making extra income, making some quick cash, a quick buck, however you want to term it. It's about building something that you can level up and it can grow over time so that you and the side hustle can continue to expand and evolve because as the side hustle grows, you're going to grow as the entrepreneur, the person behind this side hustle. So be mindful, please, please, please. I cannot stress this enough. Be mindful of your numbers from the very, very, very beginning and always look at them. Financial planning is crucial. Know your numbers, my friend. Know them. Don't avoid nothing. Okay, know what's going in, what's coming out, where it's coming from, all of that. You want to analyze the cost and your expenses, what you can budget and how, where these funds are going to be coming from. Most likely it'll be your nine to five to begin with if you can allocate those funds and that budget from your nine to five to your side hustle. What else can be added 
this is really important. What else can be added as another stream of income in your side hustle? So let's use myself as an example, okay? Let's say, okay, I'm starting my coaching business, but before I start getting clients, I want to work with a coach. This is so going back eight years ago. I want to work with a coach because investing in a coach brings a clarity and provides the tools that I wouldn't have previously had. And by working with this coach, now I can in turn create a plan to attract and convert clients who will pay. Because before, where I might have struggled with marketing and leads and my offer and all of that is now very clear because of working with a coach who has everything, is equipped with everything to then support me in my coaching business. So there may be other products that you can offer as well, be it a course or an ebook on top of the coaching. Much like this podcast is for me. People can find me, they can learn about me, they can learn from me, and then they can reach out to me for for those next steps. And all this comes back to having another channel to generate the income. Ultimately, here's what it comes down to. If you are pouring money into your side hustle without seeing its potential to get that return on investment, you will have to question its profit potential. Basically, is your side hustle going to become a lean, mean, money-making machine where you will have more coming in than going out, which in turn means a profit? And from that profit, how can you ensure it is long-term with room to grow? So just like me investing in a coach, I did see a return on that investment because I said, okay, I pay this one amount to for a coach who can equip me with all the tools, but then because this coach was able to help me with marketing and my offer and identify my target audience, all the other great things, I can now show up and attract the right people. So I pay one coach one time, but then I start to generate three, four, five, six, 50 new clients and it pays for, investing in that coach is paid for and then some. And mind you, it might not be that your side hustle is a flop per se, but you will need to evaluate where the gaps are so that they can be filled and you can in turn generate revenue that will cover expenses and it leaves you with a profit. So understanding what income is, understanding what revenue is and understanding what profit is as well. You want to generate income, you have a certain amount of revenue that you're generating, but from that, that what you've has come in There are things you're going to cover, right? You're going to cover your expenses and maybe there's other debt you've incurred. And after everything is paid for, do you have money left over? That is your profit. So think about when you're, you're the profit potential and the growth. Where else? How else? What other offers or products can you offer in your side hustle to generate? And having multiple, that's what is multiple streams of income. How can you generate multiple streams of income in your side hustle idea? Are you keeping up with me? That was number two. So next up, number three. I don't know what that was. Number three, (laughs) market demand and competition. Okay. Understand the demand for your side hustle and sizing up the competition is also crucial. And I want to be clear on something. There's a difference between comparing yourself to someone else in the same field or industry and evaluating your market so you can find your unique edge, your competitive advantage. So the the research would involve identifying your target audience and their needs, how you can fulfill them, and what others in the industry may be missing that you can do also effortlessly to attract your your target audience. So once you identify who you want to target, have the conversations with them, observe their, their behaviors that derive from these needs that you, these gaps that you are trying to fill and how you can fill that gap. You are trying to find ways to stand out in what could potentially be a crowded market. And trust me, how crowded it is does not matter. The number doesn't matter because they are not you. 
Think about your value proposition. In simple terms, the benefits of your side hustle and how you will deliver these benefits as you create a marketing strategy. The more time you, that you spend researching and observing, really getting to know your target audience and their needs, the more of a flow there will be between managing your time between the two. Because the research may seem like an, an added step, but it's a really important step. Just really understanding who you are trying to serve and how you're going to serve them. Instead of just, I have this thing that I want to sell to people, make sure that they they actually need it and you are presenting it in a way that they they want to buy it from you. So I did mention time and managing the time between doing the research and actually showing up and serving a client. So time is actually the, the fourth and final point. As I mentioned, I'm only going to share four today. So there's a time commitment and flexibility as well. Balancing a nine to five and a side hustle can seem like a bit of a juggling act, especially when you're just starting out the first from ideation to creation. So it's essential to maximize productivity without burning out, like finding the sweet spot between dedication and allowing yourself some real breathing space. I shared in an episode and talked about the difference between working on your business and working in your business. Working on is what's going on. What are you doing behind the scenes? And working in your business is what's coming in, How did you, the income that you will be generating in your, in, your, in your side hustle, in your side hustle. So you have to be mindful that you don't have as much time as someone else who may have 40 hours a week. You have a full-time job, you have a life, and now you're trying to include a side hustle in that. So be realistic with your time. Time block. Do smaller chunks of time, like 45 minutes. Focus on one task in that period. Multitasking, I've mentioned it before. I found it find it counterproductive. Work on one thing, focus on one thing, get the one thing done, and as opposed to trying to be here, there, and everywhere within a, a certain, a shorter time period as well. You see, the thing is, balance is a very relative term, right? I don't even use the word balance. Balance is a very relative term. So focus on what looks like balance for you. Focus on what managing those expectations, your expectations. Take those breaks whenever you've decided to work on a, a for a longer time period. Even if it is 45 minutes, still take a break. Even if it's a five-minute break, get up, walk around, change the scenery, go for a bio break, get some water, whatever it is, but take those breaks. Burnout is a very, very real thing. Take it from someone who has felt the effects, Okay. So showing yourself grace, managing expectations, and being realistic with what you have the capacity to work on is very, very crucial. I keep using the word crucial because all of these are very crucial. We're trying to figure out your side hustle's true potential. And there is no room for guilt. No room for guilt. Never be so hard on yourself that you feel guilty about not getting something done because there will be the times when maybe your nine to five is too demanding or just leaves you tired at the end of the day or the end of the week. Something else is going on in your life. You didn't get to work on a side hustle the way you'd like to. Maybe you get sick. Maybe you had to go away. Just let's, let's, let's shed the guilt. We're not dealing with guilt when we're trying to create our own thing. Please, please, please shed the guilt. Maybe you don't have the bandwidth for something. You just, you just, you're not able to. You don't have the capacity. You are human. You are only one person. There's only so much that you can do. You want to be able to navigate any factors that might contribute to burnout. Do not push yourself if you don't have anything else to give. This will also impact your side hustle's true potential. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at four. Because this is a good, this is a starting point. This is these are just things for you to consider to help to guide you and to really take a step back and evaluate your side hustle. So personal interests and passion, profit potential and growth, market demand and competition, time commitment 
and flexibility. Now, let's get this out there. If you're committed, you are just committed to making your side hustle work, it's going to work, okay? It is going to work, baby, because you are ready to put in the work to make it work. Do the things to make it work. I work with some amazing women that are just, CJ, let's do this. And they're committed no matter how long it takes to making it work. So remember to think long term. Remember that the results might not happen overnight. You may want to launch in a month. Is Are you really going to be able to launch in a month? What happens if you're going to have to launch in two months or three months? Think longer term. If you have a side hustle idea or you started or you're trying to decide on next steps, you don't have to do it alone. You can check the description. Okay, and grab your side hustles, side hustlers quarterly guide. Or you can visit my website, kristennjames.com, and book a 15 minute vibe check. We can you do 15 minutes, right? We can hang out for 15 minutes. I have so many more. I only shared four today. I got so much more where this came from. So be sure, please reach out to me. Let's let's talk. Let's chat or grab the guide. If you'd work on the guide, you download it and you're like, oh, I still need to talk to CJ. Please. I'm here. I'm ready. I'm willing. I'm able to, to hang out and chat with you and guide you, my friend. And I can't, I can't wait to connect. I cannot wait to connect. Tell me more. I want to hear more about your side hustle and your side hustle's true, true, true potential. Thanks for hanging with me, friend, for watching or listening today, whichever platform you are on. Know that I absolutely appreciate you and I will see you, okay? I will see you next week.